Before we delve too deep into the content of this course, I want to start by talking about science inquiry. And science inquiry is a process or a way of thinking. And it's the way that scientists solve problems and the way that they learn about the world around them. So without this process of science inquiry, we really can't um, explain how things work in this world. So it's important that you understand the basic process of science inquiry. Many of you learned this in elementary school and, and possibly middle and high school. Again, probably you've seen it over and over. And often they, it's called the scientific method. And so you've learned the steps of the scientific method. But in case you haven't internalized these steps yet, um, we're going to go over this again so that you can think about it and hopefully think about it in a slightly different way that will help to cement this process and a way of thinking in your mind. So in order to introduce science inquiry, we're going to go through a very simple example. And this is called the birthday present experiment example. And so this is really an analogy for science inquiry. So let's imagine that your friend Jaime sends you a birthday present. And Jaime sends this present about a month early, so you're like, looking at this present and it's wrapped it's very pretty um, but you can't open it because it's not your birthday yet so that's pretty mean Jaime should have waited to send that present to you um, but you are really curious and so even though you don't open it you do want to you're kind of curious you want to figure out what's in that box and so that's the, the beginning of the process of science inquiry is that that curiosity and wonder and trying to figure out what is causing something or what you know what's in the box so what's um, behind uh, something that you observe so you envision what you hear in the box and as different friends visit you over the next month you all take turns shaking that box and try and figure out what you think is inside of it and so we're going to go through this experiment and see who is right. So once we have a question or something that we're curious about, then we develop a hypothesis. And so in this example, you develop a hypothesis of what you think is inside that box. And then over time, as friends visit, they also come up with their own hypothesis about what is inside the box. So we're going to go through this process and um, put different items in a box that's similar to the one that you received and shake them and see which one makes the sound that's closest to the present that you received. Hypothesis number one is your hypothesis. So you and Jaime both love the same type of jelly beans and you can only get these jelly beans in the town where Jaime lives. So you think that must be what's in the box. So your hypothesis is that the box contains jelly beans. And so let's um, test this out by listening to the sound that jelly beans make in the box. Next, your friend Veronica comes over and she says, oh, you and Jaime both love gardening. I bet that Jaime sent you some seeds for your garden. So Veronica's hypothesis is that the box contains seeds. So I'm going to play the sound of seeds shaking in the box. Your friend John comes over a few days later and he thinks that Jaime probably sent you more funny jewelry to add to your collection because you like to wear very unique um, jewelry and Jaime always comments on that. So John's hypothesis is that the box contains silly earrings. And so you do the experiment, you put, the, you put um, some earrings in a box and shake it. Jaime knows you're trying to eat more whole grains and have a healthier diet 
And so your friend Yolanda, when she comes over, she says, well, you know, I think that Jaime sent you some wild rice because there's an area that, of wild rice that grows near his town. So that's Yolanda's hypothesis. And so as a, as a pair, you put some wild rice in a box and shake it, and this is what you hear. When Carl comes over to visit, Carl says, you know, you collect a lot of seashells and Jaime is very thoughtful and, and likes, you know, he always comments on your seashell, seashell collection when, when he comes over. So I bet that he got you a box of seashells. And so uh, Carl puts some seashells in a box and you shake it and you hear this sound. You've tested a lot of different items to see which ones sound the most similar to the gift that you received. So now we'll listen to the gift and the sound that it makes when you shake it. And I want you to think in your head which sound is the most similar to this gift box. So then the next step would be um, to open the box and see what's inside. So now it's your birthday, it's time to open the box. Um, so let's see what is inside of your gift. When you open the gift, you see a box full of jelly beans. And so your hypothesis, the hypothesis number one, was correct. And of course this makes sense because you had the most educated guess. Um, right before Jaime sent you the gift, you were speaking with him on the phone about how much you love jelly beans. And so it makes sense that Jaime would send you jelly beans for your birthday. And so, you know, that's some good background information that scientists have that can inform their hypothesis. And so generally a hypothesis is not made in the, in the dark. You typically have some background information that helps to provide you with a good educated guess. And then you collect a lot of data and then you use that further information to conclude if your hypothesis was incorrect or if the information leads you to believe that it is probably correct. Scientists develop hypotheses using the best information that's available to them but sometimes this simply is not enough. So it, it's possible that all of you were, were wrong. Perhaps Jaime wanted to send you something that you had just never seen before. In this case, the hypothesis, or your best educated guess, that was proposed by you and the ones proposed by your friends would not have been right. And so you may sometimes only be able to disprove hypotheses and come up with a new hypothesis to test, um, and, and you may not always be able to support your hypothesis with the information that you collect. An example from our experiment would be the seeds. So when you shook the box that had seeds, they sounded very different from the, the box with the jelly beans or from the gift box. And so we disproved that hypothesis by saying, okay, that's not what's in the, the gift box, um, but that didn't tell us what was in the gift box. So a lot of hypothesis testing is, is disproving things rather than confirming a hypothesis. And so the last complicating a uh, messy part of science inquiry is that as a scientist, we don't really get to open the box to confirm whether we were 100% correct. So scientists can never prove a hypothesis to be 100% true, but as you collect more and more information or evidence, um, you can rely on that evidence more and more to the point where you can be fairly confident with your conclusion. And so scientists, again, try and collect as much information as possible so that they can draw a sound conclusion um, and either support their hypothesis or disprove their hypothesis.